It's a beautiful day here in the Bay Area. We are out on tour right now, and I am so stoked to invite a very, very, very good friend of mine. And uh, he and I have been close friends for, I want to say, like, maybe two, three years now. You may have first seen him in the movie. I can only imagine he was the drummer. And uh, I first met him at our church. And he was the drummer at our church, Rolling Hills Covenant. And we just got connected. And man, oh man, we've been best buddies ever since. Let's see if he can join us soon. Rolling, rolling, rolling. You here, dude? You can do it. Let me invite him. All right. Let's see what happens. If he's going to join us right now, special announcement from Christ of Far Eye. So yeah, we're doing a bunch of shows. We have two more days of shows here in the Bay Area. And one of them is tonight in Watsonville, California. That one's going to be epic. I'm super stoked about that one. It's going to be a back to school thing. And uh, there's going to be a bunch of youth, but you can come as an adult as well. Dude, speaking Whoa. of adults, here's this dude. <laughs> What's going on, man? How's it going, man? Bro. All right. So this is Cole Marcus, Hello. which Hello. is actually not your official name. It's your stage name. Marcus is your middle name, not your last name, right? <laughs> Immediately. We just go with Cole, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but you are you are Cole, uh, and you are a surfer. You and I surf together. You surf a we lot. We have a lot Hawaiian of Hawaiian food together. Probably too much. Food. Way too much. Uh, <laughs> Never enough. Never enough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, how did we meet? Tell. Let's go. Let's get into that first. Oh shoot, dude. Uh, well, uh, I I think. I think it was just uh, you were introduced to me years ago, like years ago, from a, from a, from a worship leader friend of mine. He was like, "Dude, you gotta meet this guy's the lead singer of Christ Far." I was like, "Ah, you know, I'm 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 a really shy guy when it comes to meeting new people." Yeah. And so and so you know, but you and I, I felt like we just hit it off from that point on, yeah. and and then uh, and then a few years later, we just really connected, uh, just talking about a bunch of a bunch of things regarding music and. Yep. And, um, and, you know, in, enhancements with your band and, and yeah. a lot of, you know, uh, in, in, including some, some trial and, and tribulation yeah. error, errors. And I, I think there was a lot of, I like how you say gross... enhancements, <laughs> it, well, but that's the best way to put it though. Cause you know, it's look, I feel like every day is going to offer you, you know, one type of issue or another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's up to you, yeah. and it's up to you whether you're going to allow it to dictate how your life goes, yeah. or if you're going to call it an enhancement or something to work with. Yeah, uh, it's a new improvement. So, uh, anyways, but yeah, I, I think just you and I, we we really hit it off on that note, and just uh, being able to encourage one another. But yeah, man, it's been like what two or three years now. Yeah, yeah, you we, we've uh, become man. iron for each other, and uh, iron sharpens iron. And so, yeah, at least once a week we would get together. For breakfast, which happens at 2 p.m. for me. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't had my breakfast for the day. I will. I will. I am surprised you're up this early, man. This is this is wild. This is a this is a rare thing. You are nocturnal, my guy. <laughs> yes, I am. My circadian rhythm is very different than most. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll pour over some good food and some fellowship and some word. Encourage each other in that. Keep each other accountable. And then beyond that, really just ask the tough questions. What, you know, what are you facing this week? What are you struggling with? What are your issues? And for you and I, it's nice on my perspective because you're not in my band. Um, you can actually offer an outside perspective of somebody who's been in the music industry for a long time. And let's talk about that long time now. That long time, you started when you were what? Uh, I think I was four. Four years when things old. started for me. It's it's been a it's been a long time just uh, doing a lot of film and television as a kid, and you know I want to 
a TV show when I was when I was four years old that you know later turned into America's Got Talent. So I, I won America's Got America's Most Talented Kid when I was four, and um, for playing drums, for playing drums out of all things. Yeah. And um, and just the talk show circuit went on, and bro, it's been like two or three different chapters of my life since then, man. It's just been yeah. It's just been wild how God has kept me, you know, He's kept me safe during this whole season. And, and now the season that I'm entering into where, you know, I'm just writing and producing music full time. And I'm mm -hmm. also uh, tracking a lot of music for a lot of great worship artists mm -hmm. and, uh, and doing a lot of, you know, recording a lot of drums for different people. Yeah. And so um, as, as well as different instruments and doing overall music production and writing. So uh, it's, it's, it's wild that I'm in this position now to where, you know, I've been at this for such a long time, but I'm still really young. And I, yeah. I, I feel like I feel 24, I'm 24, 25 next week, going on 48 sometime soon. You know, I mean, it's been, it's been a weird life so far, bro. But, you know, thank God that I'm able to, uh, to be able to relate in subjects, uh, according to stuff like what, what you're going through with your band and, and, and the amount of, the amount of evangelism that you guys are doing. And, yeah. um, I love the fact that you and I can not only be iron sharpeners in life in general, but mm -hmm. also within the studio as well. Yeah, and, that, uh, and it's always been, and that's how we ended up on this live stream. That's the reason why we're even, yep. why we're even talking right now. We're, we're pushing it's, the new single. It's, it's, and uh, it's, it's all, it's all because I stayed, I stayed at your studio too late one night. And then you said, Hey, you want to sing this song? And I said, yeah, sure. Next thing you know, I'm singing the whole thing. You kept saying to me, you're going to sing on it too. I'm like, why? You sound so good. So here it is. Check it out. I'm going to go take you to the beginning. This is the latest one. Woo. Christ of Far Eye featuring Cole Marcus. <laughs> Regrettably, we can't sing together because the timing is going to be so off. <laughs> Give me a little taste of it. Give me a, give me a piece of one of those verses. Oh, oh man. Bro, you throw me on the spot like that. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> this this man's throwing me on the spot. Oh, oh okay. Well, now I'm going to now I'm just going to you know, have it way at this point. Okay. Okay. How about my, my mama used to sing this song? Uh, my mama used to sing this song. Shut the door. Keep out the devil. My papa used to sing this too. Shut the door, keep the devil in the night. Jesus called, and this part's not true, and took them home. There's, my folks are still around. They better be around for a long time. I still need them. And so I sing this song to you. Shut the door. <laughs> And yeah. I say, shut the door, keep out the devil. And that part's your part, and you throw down on that as always. Yeah, yeah. So, so here's my question to you: Did mm. your mom used to sing this song? She did. She did. So, so, uh, so, so, my mom was raised in Jamaica. Oh. And um, and yeah, and 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 you know this, I know this, and 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 that's uh, you know, I mean, you know, with with your wife being a Trini, I know there's, you know, it's it's like relatives, it's like cousins. Mm -hmm. Um, but but with that, she was uh, she was raised in a very island lifestyle, and so I was brought up mm -hmm. with a lot of lot of music that was um, that was relevant to that that scene yeah. in that era, and so and so she would sing that song to me as a child, and my dad would play it all the time, and say so it's it, it's kind of um, I think it's funny that you and I we were driving up to the studio one night, and that and that's literally when you were like, hey man, have you ever heard this song? You throw it on, I'm like, dude, I grew up with this song, and you're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, and you're like, interesting. I, hey, I, I, have an intentionality. This, yep, I had this. an intentionality on the way there, driving yep. to your house. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play this song and see if he knows it. There's <laughs> always an edge with this. There, there's always a, there's always an angle. If he asks me a question, I go, oh man, what am I signing up for this time? Well, you and I, we would always be, as I'd pick you up, we'd be listening to a lot of '80s stuff. For some reason, it's like you were born in the '80s too. It wasn't that you were born in the '80s, but your parents, your parents were in a prime at that time, and yeah. not that they're not in a prime now, but, uh, you know, so so the music that they listened to when they were, you know, 
in the 70s, 80s, or this music that I grew up with. And so they kind of raised you in it the same way that Ziza knows like all the 80s songs that I grew up on, listening to K on K Rock and stuff like that. There's just something about that. But um, so it's kind of cool to be listening to Flock of Seagulls together. And sometimes you even have hair like Flock of Seagulls. So it really works. Not today, but yeah, pretty <laughs> much something like that. Man, I am on beach mode bro oh, today. Yeah. Um, where, where are you at and what are you getting ready to do right now uh so i am currently on my way to um well i'm parked in the middle of a flying frisbee parking lot something like that for, but anyways i'm on my way to uh to huntington beach to play for the california will be saved uh two-year anniversary nice. uh if 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 any of y'all watching are in the huntington beach area or maybe even if it's a little bit of a drive for you uh mark wait are you are you still in california yeah, I'm in San Jose. Okay, cool. So if you're in San Jose, if you're in San Jose, go see Mark. And if uh, you're playing today, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. cool. So if you're so if so if you're up in Northern California today, go see Mark and Christ Safari. They're going to absolutely deliver. If you're down south and you're uh, somewhere close to Huntington Beach, come come watch California. We'll be saved. We're going to be worshiping Jesus for about two hours on the sand. It's going to be that's, great. That's is that, that's a, that's right at the pier, right? North side. That of is Europe. right at the pier. You won't be able to miss yeah. us. We're going to be louder than all get out, and it starts at five. The same place we'll be on Labor Day weekend on the Friday, and yeah. then the Saturday. No, no, no. The Friday is RHPC. The Saturday is Light at the Lighthouse Festival. And the Sunday is going to be at Huntington Beach. And I'm hoping to get you up on stage with us again. So I love that. Tell us what it was like this last time joining us on stage. It was the first time you ever jumped on stage with us. Um, yeah. That was in Indio. Tell, what, what was it like? Yeah, well, first of all, um, uh, thank God for that church in India. What's the name of that church again? The Garden Fellowship. Such the an awesome Garden. place. So good. What a, what a great, wholesome group of people. Um, I, I love just going to that church just in general, just to just visit. Yeah. That was that was very enjoyable. Um, but yeah, no, that was funny. Like I said, with with this guy, there's always an angle. And uh, and in this case, he, you know, I guess he didn't know that I was showing up until like, you know, a couple hours prior. I called you up and you're like, oh, shoot, you're coming. OK, bring your in-ears. Wear black and white. You're going to be on stage. And I said, oh, dude. so uh, so next thing, I, next thing I know, I <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, I mean, well, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, you know, I'm going to be wearing freaking pastels up here. Anyways, you know, not, not Christafari color. Anyways, so, but, but, uh, ne next thing I know, I'm backstage, you know, hyping myself up. And you're like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, you know, I come out there and, you know, dude, it was fun. It was so much fun to be able to sing with you, dude. And, uh, and I think as, uh, as friends, it, it, it felt like just a, just a fun night out, man. It felt like. It felt like karaoke because everybody else knew your music too. Hey, man, well, the cool thing for me that night was that here I am on stage with my wife, with my kid, with my band, who were in many ways my best friends, and then you and Richard, who are my other two best friends outside of the band that, that I spend a lot of time with. You guys both got to grace the stage and bless the audience and it for me it was just like a big love fest i was like these are my favorite things all put together and then we had good food afterwards and fellowship that's what it's all about it was just a for me it was a glimpse of heaven loved it can't wait to do it again with you so let's talk about this single how does shut me go compared to working with me in the studio compared to working with the blue man group uh, two very different things man man you really left field with that um well you were in a blue man group commercial for tylenol if they search cole marcus yep they'll see you <laughs> that was terrifying I, I believe i was seven or eight years old and 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 nothing was more terrifying than seeing uh you know, a giant man coming at me with blue lip gloss all over his face. And they said, you're next. And I went, yeah, get myself out of here. So um, that being said, last time I checked, you didn't have any blue lip gloss on your face. No. So, uh, no. No. you know, so so I, I I think it's a little bit a little bit easier. Maybe yeah. I'm a little less anxious. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm blue for you. Uh, oh, man. Speaking of, speaking of your mom, which you mentioned earlier, she, uh, both she and your father, uh, let's just say that you're not doing music just out of happenstance. This, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Give us a little bit of, of where they came from and what they do. 
Yeah, so they actually wrote and produced the music for the Barbie doll um, through the 80s and the early and mid 90s. Um, and uh, pretty much everything pre Barbie movie uh, was my folks, you know, the little pink cassette tapes that would come with it. And um, they wrote and produced was the doll. voice. She was yeah. the voice of Barbie. This yeah, my mom was the voice of Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so if you hear anything early, anything that's pre, I'm a Barbie girl, anything before that is my mom. So. Anything with Paula Abdul dancing or things like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So there was a there was a certain prime for that, and that was that was my folks. That was kind of their niche. Or and they wrote the songs together. Yeah. They tried as best as, as possible to keep it positive and stuff. Your mom's a session vocalist in the studio and live stuff. She can hold it down with anybody doing anything from black gospel to soul to you name it, right? Mm -hmm. And then your dad is a drummer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the apple really didn't fall far from the tree there. I mean, my dad wanted me to be a doctor, so. Uh. <laughs> but you rebelled and followed his footsteps. Uh, my rebel, you know how it is. My man. rebel, I have, I have... it is time to rebel. <laughs> now that's oh, something uh, that people don't know about you is that uh, while everybody may know you as the drummer on, I can only imagine um, so, a, a phrase that I say all the time around you. I can only imagine you're like, oh, Mark, you're just, you just. <laughs> but you used to do a whole tour in promotion of that movie that was really the first breakaway christian production i would say um where where it just it went viral in many ways and because of that there's these other movies that are doing really really good as well and i think that we need to give props and respect to to where you know a lot of that came from the building blocks of that was that movie yeah. one of the first times that there, there was it was just good there was no cheese in that one i know you like cheese on your enchilada but uh there was no cheese at all and it was it was super dope and so you got to do a tour what was it like doing a tour with that where you were going and speaking and sharing they would play the movie they, then you would get to get to ask and ask and answer questions and stuff like that. Yeah, it was it, it was so so necessary, and I, I I considered that full ministry. That's what it was. Yeah. Um. You know where where I would be, uh, in a place where I was going to all these different churches across the states, um, and just having these genuine conversations with people. I'm I'm a conversation person. I mean, you know, this is the reason why we're yeah. so tight. It's like I'm a conversationalist. Yeah. So for, so for me, you know, going to the these churches where they would either have me you know speak with the pastor or they'd even have me do a sermon uh and then you know and then maybe play with the worship team or something like that and then you know and then they would show my movie later and then we would do these q and a's the q and a is what i was there for man because after the movie it's like the movie is so gut-wrenching and i'm so proud of how it yeah. turned out and that it was actually so good and um and i'm glad to say that that was kind of um at least for now that that was kind of the cap of my acting career where i could say i'm like I got to do exactly what I wanted yeah. in a movie that I'm proud of. That's that's very well acclaimed in an industry that I appreciate. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I can I can be happy for right now. Yeah, and um, but the most important part for me was the conversations where I would have these these deep Q and A's with people where it wasn't just like, what was it like working with Tom Cruise? You know, Tom Cruise wasn't in the movie, but you know, I'm just saying it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, I, it wasn't these stereotypical questions. I'd get questions like, what was your biggest struggle while you were on set? And I'm like, there we go. That's mm. the subject. Let's talk about that. And then we'd end up, you know, we, you know, it would open up the door for me to have some real conversations with real people about real problems in their life. Mm. And mm -hmm. so, um, and then be able to relate where, you know, it's like stuff going on in my, you know, my life too. I mean, there was a lot of drama on set, yeah. but, but um, at the end of the day, and I think you and I, we were just talking about this this morning, you can either be a victim or you can be the victor. Yeah. And for me, the latter sounds a lot more appealing and it sounds more the way that Christ works. So, so I, I try to follow in that way. Amen. Amen. Well, we have people watching from all over the world, from Trinidad and Tobago to uh, Brazil. Of course, Brazil's always watching. Brazil! Uh, Brazil. De Bruno said, I must have listened to your new single, Yahweh, 1,000 times today alone. And I think that the, there's a lot of positive response over our, our new music, and a lot of people don't realize that our secret weapon in that music, if you click on the description of those songs in YouTube, is you on background vocals, but that was the first song where 
where you took a lead position for a, a chorus and you're like are you really going to get you know you're going to put other voices in here i'm like no we don't need it and I, I i feel bad with it not prominently saying it's featuring you the next song obviously does because it is undeniable but if you watch the music video for yahweh and you get to the baptismal scene where you don't see somebody singing he's the guy who's singing give me give me some of those little runs you did for yahweh come on oh man man Yahweh, Rafa, Elohim. Something like that. And you added that little that little end tag. But magnify yourself. I just love that. That was something that I that I think takes the song beyond as as we're as we're doing covers here and there. We wanna add our own secret sauce and and you're definitely a key part of that for the last uh, i would say year or so maybe more you've been in the studio uh you, you pop up after midnight i i throw you down on a few songs you do some sweet harmonies and, and you harmonize and with uh, in and out and in and out <laughs> you harmonize with avion perfectly and i think a good portion of that is is because not just was your mom is your mom uh, incredible vocalist but your grandfather was an incredible vocalist tell tell us about him yeah so uh so my grandfather was a choral conductor uh from age 14 professionally uh pretty much up until he was bedridden and uh he was he was probably one of the most like sought after baritone vocalists um for choral arrangements uh you know his whole life he he was you know he was a he was a double baritone. So um, he ended up on a lot of great recordings. I think he did some work for Disney too, if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, he was, he was the guy, but just such a gentle soul as well. But uh, he, uh, interesting fact was um, at least one person from each, uh, each generation on my mom's side does have perfect pitch. So my grandfather had perfect pitch. My mom, who was the middle child, had perfect pitch. I have perfect yeah. pitch. And, and, and yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, and so it's like, it's, you know, it's a blessing and a curse to live with, as you know, I mean, it's, it's a, you know, it's, yeah, everybody's off key and you're like, ah, you're oh, yeah, yeah. Cause the good, you know, the good news is, you know, when, you know, you know, when people are off key and the bad news is, you, you know, when they're off key. So you gotta, yeah, you know, but now, uh, so a lot of people don't know that you are a multi-instrumentalist. Mm -hmm. You play pretty much to every instrument. Um, you wouldn't go around bragging about it, but I will. <laughs> and and I, I'm sure some people, even Avion's like, man, why doesn't he join us on tour or something like that? But a lot of people don't know what you and I have been kind of working on, and that is me encouraging the heck out of you to pursue something that is dear to you. It's written all over your wall in chalk. What is it? So, um, I'm a big advocate for the Bible verse, Matthew 6.33, which is, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Amen. and then all of these things will be added to you. And I believe that those things are more than physical. They're more than, they're, they're more than the house, the car, you know, the family. It's, it's more than that. When, when you ask God for things such as joy, peace, understanding, discernment, wisdom, when you seek him first in the morning, all of those things will be ingrained in you and then everything else will come out on top yeah. of it. So I thought it was only appropriate um, to start purposely. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I do write and produce music uh, and I've always done it for film and, you know, I've done it for film and television TV yeah. placements. That's and I, I haven't really necessarily, and I haven't necessarily gone public with any of of um of spotify or itunes or anything like that mainly for the sake of i I'll be honest i've enjoyed my private life mm -hmm. um but i thought it was very appropriate to come out with uh, with a name project 633 mm -hmm. under the name matthew 633 and i think it's important to start releasing music yeah that is important to me relevant to me yeah and also relevant to others and I, I, I think I think the way that I can get that across the best is just by being honest with myself mm -hmm. and allowing the lyrics of whatever pain and whatever trial and triumph yeah. 
that I go through in my personal life to be something that is relayed in such a way to where hopefully uh, my generation can relate to it. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, it's one of those things and, you know, obviously right now it's definitely the preliminary stages of releasing anything. Um, definitely have a few, t you know, we definitely have a full lineup of music ready to go. And yeah. I, I've yeah. worked tirelessly on it for the past few years, just cultivating a sound. And so I think we're getting yeah. to the breaking point where it's about time to start making the next step and go public with it. Yeah. So just so those, those of you that are watching the, the band will be called or project will be called project 633. Mm -hmm. It will come out Lord willing in less than a year from now, mm -hmm. hopefully sooner than that. You can be praying for him as he's off to Nashville very mm -hmm. shortly to, to begin that, that dance, that courtship, that whatever. And uh, I've heard this stuff uh, as I've been, not just a friend, but kind of a musical mentor, somebody who, who did the Nash Vegas thing for some time, um, listening to the stuff and, and encouraging the heck out of him. This stuff is good. It's ready. It's, you know, let's get it up. Let's get it out to the people. So there are certain people in the industry that are listening to it right now. Pray that it gets to the right ears and that the wrong ears are completely sealed with wax. Right. And um, the right partnership the right marriage is what's best. And we just want to glorify God with this relationship so that he can use his talents, his gifts in putting Jesus first. A lot of these songs are, are more like Psalms. So they're heart cries about dealing with everything from heartache to heartbreak to running PV at, at what time, at what time do you go running? How far do you run sometimes? Yeah, man, I, I, I will, if if I'm going through it, man, we'll pull we'll pull us anywhere between eight to twelve miles, and I don't care what time in, in the morning it is. Run, forest, yeah. run, and but but you get songs from that at, at the I, end of it all. I have my talks with Jesus, man. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um, I'm excited for this, and uh, I'm excited to have you join us, Lord willing, at, when we're playing in SoCal soon, and uh, and just to, looking forward to many more meals with you. I know you got to get off to a show right now. And I'm so excited for that. I got to get ready for a show as well. Yeah. But I want to encourage you guys, check out our new single, Shut the Door. Shut the Door. Keep, Keep on the devil. devil. That's right. Check it out. It's up on Spotify. It's up on Apple Music. You can watch the lyric video that I put together while on tour. Uh, you can watch that on YouTube right now. Um, we're going to be announcing it officially on our email list and our text alerts early this coming week. Um, right now, we're kind of letting people simmer with, with Yahweh because it's doing really, really well. But there is new music. We promise new music every week. This is the mu new music, so enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed this conversation with my bestie right here because it's been awesome. And, dude, let's do some Hawaiian food when we get back, assuming that the hurricane doesn't knock everything out. <laughs> God willing, man. All right. At least we'll surf the hurricane. Hey, All right, God bless you. 40 foot waves, baby. <laughs> God bless you, Cole Marcus. Project 633, we pray for you, and we can't wait to see you again. Love you, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Love you, too. Check it out, guys. Shut it all. I'm going to shut this door right now. Ciao.